Okay, hi everybody. I want to go ahead and uh, discuss a little bit about function notation here. So if a relation is a function, we use this special notation f of x to represent the output instead of just y. So instead of writing y equals x plus 3, we would write f of x equals x plus 3. And that seems maybe a little counterintuitive in math. Usually we like to simplify expressions. It seems like this is a little bit more complicated than y. Uh, but in this case, even though it's a little bit more uh, complicated, it actually is worth the complication because it uh, tells us a lot of information in a very compact form. Uh, one thing in particular it allows us to do is this. Instead of this, this big long statement here, if x is 2, then y is 5. And notice if I plug in x equals 2 up here, y would be 5. This notation allows me to say very simply that f of 2 is equal to 5. So, so it's, it's, it's telling me uh, both the input, that it's 2, and that the output is 5. And it's also telling me uh, that that the relation is a function and every time that I put into I'm going to get 5 out of it so so instead of uh, another example instead of writing you know y is 2 when x is negative 1 uh, which I see if I plug in negative 1 I'll get 2 I would just write f of negative 1 is equal to 2. So it tells me both the input, what I'm plugging into it, and what the output is. And every time I plug in this input, I'm going to get 2 out because I know it's a function. All right, so um, here's a, another example. f of x is 2x plus 3. And for this function, f of 1, when I say, hey, what's f of 1? That means the output or the y value that corresponds to the input or the x value of 1. So all of this is tied up in this little notation here. Uh, if I just see f of 1, I immediately know, hey, it's asking for the y value, the output, when the input's 1. So, so when I plug in 1 into this function, I'm going to get 2 times 1 plus 3, or 5. Now, this x that we have in this function notation, we call that a dummy variable. And uh, if they had had uh, uh, something besides just letters on typewriters when they first developed this notation, it probably would have looked more like this. f of whatever's in the box is equal to 2 times whatever's in the box plus 3. So this is really a template or a pattern. Uh, uh, the formula tells me sort of the blueprint of what's going on, and that's what is illustrated in this diagram right here. Um, I, I plug numbers into it, and, and then the, the function changes them according to some pattern or rule. In this case, it's going to double whatever you put into it and then add 3. So if you imagine these numbers, you plug x into it, it doubles x and out comes, uh, and then adds 3, and out comes 2x plus 3. Or you put in 1, and it doubles the 1, adds 3, and out comes 5. Or So f of 2, when it says f of 2, the 2 just takes the place of x there. And I'm going to get uh, you know 2 times 2 plus 3, which is 4 plus 3 is 7. Or if I plug in 3, uh, 2 times 3 is going to double the 3 to get 6 and add 3 to get 9. <clears throat> okay, so that's the idea of uh, function notation. Here's another another uh, example, f of x is x squared. So this is the function that's going to square anything you put into it. So if I plug negative 2 into that, negative 2 is the input, then the function says to square that, and out comes 4. If I plug in negative 1, it's going to square the negative 1, and out comes 1. If you plug in 0, it's going to square the 0, and out comes 0, and so on. So f of 1 is 1 squared, and f of 2 is 2 squared. Okay, so <clears throat> we use letters f uh, mostly for functions, f for function, but we, uh, if we uh, want, we can use other letters as well, especially 
we don't want to confuse them. So here's another example. Um, g of n is equal to 3n squared minus 2n. And so I'm just calling this function g, maybe to just distinguish it from the previous function f. Um, and this letter n, again, that can be any, any letter that I want. It's just a dummy variable. Hopefully you'll see that that's the same thing as if I had called it g of x equals 3x squared minus 2x, or as I have down here, g of whatever's in the box is 3 times whatever's in the box squared minus 2 times whatever's in the box. So if I want to know g of negative 1, the negative 1 is the input that's taking the place of n up here in the template or formula. So uh, I would just square the negative 1 and add 3 to it, or multiply it by 3 and then subtract 2 times the negative 1. So what's that give me? 3 here times 1 plus 2 is 5. Okay. If I ask for g of 3, then I'm going to uh, plug in 3 for n. That'll give me 3 times 3 squared minus 2 times 3. So this is 3 times 9. That's 27 minus 6. And 27 minus 6 is 21. Okay, uh, g of negative 3. All right, so that's 3 times negative 3 squared minus 2 times negative 3. So 3 times 9 is 27 plus 6. Um, 27 plus 6 is going to be 33. All right, now suppose I want to plug just some other thing in there. A, you know, it's not a number, but that's okay. I just follow the pattern. Instead of uh, plugging in negative 1 up here, I'll just plug in A. So that's going to give me 3A squared minus 2A. How about if I want G of 2A? Well, that's just going to be 3 times 2A squared minus 2 times 2a. So again, I'm just replacing the n, the dummy variable, with 2a in this case. All right, so uh, I have to square 2a. That's going to give me 4a squared minus 4a. So this ends up being 12a squared minus 4a. Uh, now, if I wanted um, 2 times g of a, notice the difference. Here the input is 2a. So I have to plug that into the machine, right, into the formula here. Um, that's different from this one. This says plug A into the machine and then multiply the output by 2. Okay, So this is going to be 2 times whatever I get when I plug A in. And I already did that up here. So if I plug A in, I'm just going to get... Um, I'm just going to get, you know, the 3A squared minus the 2A. And then this says to double that, multiply all that by 2. So that gives me 6a squared minus 4a. And you see those aren't the same, are they? Okay, so you got to be very, pay very close attention to the uh, notation that's used. All right, these next three examples illustrate that as well. Here it asks for g of a minus 2. This one says g of a minus 2. And this is g of a minus g of 2. We might wonder, well, I wonder what the relationship is between those, if those are the same or whatever. But let's think about this. So g of a minus 2, that says, tell me the, in, tell me the output when the input is a minus 2. Um, so I want to plug a minus 2 up here into this. So when I do that, that's going to give me, um, so g of a minus 2. I have to take 3 times a minus 2 squared minus 2 times a minus 2. Okay? So then I have to square out a minus 2. And hopefully you remember from your beginning algebra class that a minus 2 squared 
is a minus 2 times a minus 2. It's not a squared minus 4, is it? It's a squared. And then the outers give me a negative 2a, and the inners give me another negative 2a. So that's minus 4a plus 4. OK? So it gives me a squared minus 4a plus 4. So we got 3 times a squared minus 4a plus 4. That's this part. And then I got to subtract 2 times a minus 2. So that's minus 2a plus 4. So that's what? 3a squared minus 12a plus 12 minus the 2a plus 4. So that's 3a squared minus 14a plus 16, if I did that right. OK. So but the important thing is that the input's a minus 2. So you, you have to square that out, and, and uh, you get all of this. Now this says, tell me the output when I plug in a, and then, and then subtract 2 from that whole output. So this whole part right here, that's going to be, let me scroll up here again so we can see our function again. If I plug in a, I'm going to get 3a squared minus 2a. And then I want to subtract 2 from that. OK? So my answer is just 3a squared minus 2a minus 2. So you agree that one's definitely easier than that first one, wasn't it? Now this says, when it says g of a minus g of 2, this is asking me for the output when I plug in a. And this one's asking me for the output when I plug in 2. And then it says subtract those, OK? So, so when I plug a in, I'm going to get 3a squared minus 2a. And then when I plug 2 in, I'm going to get 3 times 2 squared minus 2 times 2. And then this right here says to subtract those. So I'm going to get 3a squared minus 2a minus all of this, which is 12 minus 4. So that answer is 3a squared minus 2a minus 8. You'll notice that none of those are the same, those last three. They're all different, so of course we have to pay close attention to the uh, notation that's used there. All right?